Good morning, Night City. Yesterday's body count lottery rounded out to a solid and sturdy 30. 10 out of Haywood, thanks to unabated gang wars. One officer down, so I guess you're all screwed. Because the NCPD will not let that go. Got another blackout in Santo Domingo. Netrunners are at it again, poking holes in the power grid. While over in Westbrook, trauma teams scrapping cyber psycho victims off the pavement. And in Pacifica, well, Pacifica is still Pacifica. This has been your man Stan. Join me in another day in our city of dreams. Of course, my name is not Stan. It's your ASMR friend. Just checking in on you. I hope you're doing well. Today, it is December 10th, 2021, which marks the one-year anniversary of Cyberpunk 2077. So happy birthday, Cyberpunk. This is a cause for celebration. Kind of. I am a fan, and I know this game is not a masterpiece by any stretch of the imagination. I'm sure there's going to be many videos Cyberpunk 2077, one year later. Is it any better? Not really, but let's talk about it. That's kind of what we're doing today. So, yes, I will talk about what I like about the game, what I don't like about the game, and what I would have liked to have seen in the game. But before we get into any of that, I would just like to state and emphasize that I am not a reviewer. I'm not an expert on how games are made. I'm not knowledgeable on the industry like that. I am just a man whispering in his apartment. These are just my thoughts on my experience. I first became aware of Cyberpunk about a month or so before it was set to be released in September 2020. It piqued my interest but I kind of forgot about it until I saw that it had got delayed until December. I saw one trailer. I loved the aesthetics. I like first-person shooters. Thumbs up for Keanu Reeves. But I just wanted to go in as blind as possible. So I did not know that this game was announced nearly a decade ago now. And I didn't know... They had shared this 45-minute gameplay trailer that had things in the trailer that did not show up in the actual game. That's why when I saw that people were angry and upset at what the game promised to be and what the final product ended up being, I completely understand their outrage. If I had been on that hype train for as long, thinking we're getting a GTA killer type of game, only for it to crash and burn harder than the GTA Definitive Edition, I would be angry too. Watching that trailer after the fact, I was like, well, what the hell? Can we get that game? Because it looks amazing. From what it sounds like, this game needed a few more years in development, but time, money, demand, and other problems led to this release of an incomplete product. Ironically, the best breakdown of this train wreck was from beat -em ups who, if you aren't familiar, he does these very energetic, fun Nintendo Switch videos, and they're not ASMR. Just a heads up. But his video on this subject is like a master class. It's very informative and very entertaining. I learned a lot watching that. I'll post a link in the description if you're interested in watching that. I'll also post a link to that 45 minute trailer. If you want to watch them to get your heart broken again. So why not talk about the gameplay and the story? 
The story is okay. Full disclosure, I haven't played it since January. And I haven't actually beaten the game. But from what I remember, the story is pretty good. Now, do I have to make a spoiler warning? I mean, it's been a year. Maybe if you somehow have come to this video and you have yet to play Cyberpunk and you're hoping to avoid spoilers, do you actually exist? Just proceed with your own caution because I'm going to lay a spoiler out. So when Jackie Wells dies, oh, spoiler alert, Jackie Wells dies. That actually hit a little bit. You know, you'll watch a movie or play a game, and when a character is killed off, you're kind of like, well, there goes that guy. But I think we got enough time with Jackie. We saw enough of his personality, and you connected with him within that world. So when he was killed, I, I felt it. It was pretty good. The whole sequence leading up to it, and then the events following it, yeah, I thought that was really well done, actually. A quick shout out to Judy Alvarez, because who doesn't love Judy Alvarez? So glad I went with Feminine V. Just saying, if you know, you know. I've been playing FPS games since Goldeneye. And actually, if you count Duck Hunt, I mean, you had a controller in the shape of a gun, shooting at things on the screen, is a hot dog a sandwich? All I'm saying is that I have history playing the genre. Through the good and the bad. So when an FPS is just average, I can still enjoy it. Cyberpunk is still so glitchy when playing the story missions that it really hinders what could have been a way more fun experience. But I will say, the guns are fun to use. I like the variety I like that they have different types. They have regular power guns. Then you have smart guns. And then tech guns. And they feel pretty nice to use. It's just that when there's too much going on, it's a little too much for the game to handle sometimes. So it kind of takes you back a little bit. But, it's okay. It's still fun to play. Also, I enjoy the futuristic scopes. Those just have a really cool feel to it. And the cyberpunk adds something different. I enjoy those. You know, the reinforced tendons to double jump, but then you get the choice to put in mantis blades. The takedowns with them are brutal. So yeah, the cyberpunk, or the cyberware aspect adds something different to the combat. And I like that. But what a missed opportunity for the life paths. You got to start as one of three things. Street kid, nomad, or corporal. And there are way more knowledgeable people that discuss this in better detail but basically all that that does is it gives you a different intro and you get an additional line of dialogue based on whether you're a street kid or a nomad or a corpro but there's only one mission one time that slightly alters the story you know, this is kind of like expectations versus reality. But what if it actually did something? Like, because you're a street kid, you can get into clubs or certain areas in the city that maybe a nomad doesn't have access to, or a corporal would be shot on sight for trying to get in there. Or maybe, if you start out as a corporal agent, it's about taking the corporation down from within. Espionage and sabotage. Maybe you leak documents to the nomads, and the nomads use it against the corporals. So everything just kind of 
feeds into each other, you know? Things like that, where it actually feels impactful. But I guess maybe that's kind of a fantasy idea. But what a lame execution of a cool idea. Because that really could have made cyberpunk stand out a little more. But for me, what drew me in and what keeps me coming back is Night City itself. I know this will sound corny, but the first time I went to Chicago, I was an adult and walking through that city, I just kept looking up at the buildings, looking around, going through the alleys, just taking everything in, walking around without like a real destination, but the way it connects, you just always feel like you're going somewhere. And when I first started walking around in Night City, I have a f similar feeling, that exploration. I really enjoy that. It feels like a believable city, the way it overlaps and connects. You can just maneuver through it really well, I feel. Even the outskirts and the desert area is cool, and it's mostly empty and desolate, but that's what makes the inner city feel so alive. Plus you have the industrial area, corporate downtown, and then you have the tragic rundown area of Pacifica. And you just feel like there was hope and promise in that area. A sad tale of an idea that crumbled, like a paradise lost. Another thing I love about the exploration aspect is the parkour element. Hands down, this elevates the experience. The way you can get up to places and jump around and find cool views that you didn't even know were possible, it makes you feel like an urban explorer. When I found a few really cool spots that aren't exactly accessible, you know, that was an experience for me. I can't share that in real life. I can't go to work and say, Hey, Carol, how was your weekend? Oh, you just got back from Ireland? Oh, you're engaged? And you just won the lottery? Well, I found a way to get up to the train tracks in Cyberpunk, so... Sounds like we both had a good weekend. By the way, that reminds me. Be sure to like and subscribe because I may have a fun video coming up next week. It's just funny that, to me, the game that offers one of the most fun experiences I've had in all of my gaming experience is also probably the most disappointing game launch ever. Like, ever, ever. And some of you may think, that's still too kind. That's fair. Back to the city. Again, I'm not an expert on how games are made, how they work. Shout out to tutorials. But you know, you see something and you just think, hmm, you know what would be cool? This is what I wish was in Cyberpunk. There are times you're walking through the city and there's a fairly decent amount of citizens walking around, but sometimes it's practically a ghost town. And that's fine in the outskirts, but I just think it'd be cool if the city had kind of like tourist heavy areas. Take the Cherry Blossom Market in Japantown, for instance. Let's say that from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m., that place is just packed. There's no seats available. You're nearly shoulder to shoulder, but still able to maneuver through the crowd. Or go to the heart of downtown where the holographic fish are floating around the sky. What if from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m., it's just a madhouse of tourists and city folk alike? And like I said, there is 
a decent amount of people walking around, although they aren't doing much interesting things. And they definitely don't have that uh, daily routine that they talked about. But if you've ever been to like Times Square in New York, I just think a city like that would have areas where tourists would want to go to. And it would be cool if there was just a lot of people in there at one time. Not all the time. Like, again, just between certain times where it's like, whoa, this place is busy. There's a lot of people here. Same goes for traffic. When you cross over a bridge and you see the freeway and you see little to no traffic or it's only traffic going outward, there's nothing coming towards you. Even worse, you'll just see cars appearing and disappearing in the distance. It just really kills the vibe. I wish I could just sit on a bridge and watch the traffic. That would just add so much to it. I will say driving in third person is the way to go. It's the best way to get around. And it's cool. The cars are cool. I do wish that the first person view was closer to the ground, but I understand even in Grand Theft Auto, that's a hard view to pull off. You can certainly drive in first person, but chances are you're going to be crashing a lot. I like that you can buy multiple cars, and I like that with one click, you can have that car delivered to you. What I don't like is that you can't have that vehicle recalled. So your vehicles will just stay there. You can blow them up with a grenade to get rid of them, which is what I do, because otherwise they'll just stay there, presumably for eternity. There's one time I left my car on the freeway, and I drove by it way down the line. I'm talking hours of gameplay later, multiple saves, story progression, and that car was still there. It just bugs me that that happens. I've been playing without a HUD for a long time. That's the preferred way to play it for me. But I hate when you see your car's symbol, or any symbol for that matter, like a random bar or a ripper dock. When you're about 90 meters away, that icon will just pop up. Now button prompts are totally fine. I welcome that. That should be there. When I want to open a door or get into my car, yeah, I want that button prompt. I just think that in any open world type of sandbox game, you should be able to turn off all icons. I don't want to see my car symbol while I'm walking. I don't want to see that there's a bar 90 meters away that I'm not going to go to. I have the overheard dialogue disabled, but sure enough, every now and then I'll see dialogue pop up above their head. But hey, this game has a few bugs. I don't know if you're aware of that. Few bugs still nominated for RPG Game of the Year though, because why the hell not? A quick word on fast travel. In any and every game, fast travel is always a good feature. It's in Cyberpunk. That is great. I like that it rains. I wish it looked better and sounded better. Can you imagine if we had the thunderstorms like in Red Dead Redemption 2? You're walking through an alley. The rain's coming down on you. You step out of it and you just see lightning in the distance. That would be amazing. And this one, this might be asking for too much, but I think you should be able to change the weather anytime you want. Maybe that's just me, but in a sandbox setting game, why the hell not? Why not? If I want it to be raining all the time, I should have that option. I like the day and night cycle, but there's something about it that I haven't been able to put my finger on. I think that it, it needs to be longer 
or maybe it's the time. Uh, the times the sun sets and sun rises are a little off in some way. I, I'm not quite sure, but it just feels like, yeah, I think it should be longer. Nighttime and daytime. Again, I can't quite put my finger on it, but that said, I do like that at any time you can pause, go to the menu, and skip ahead in time. My God, I love that actually, because so many times I'm walking around and I'm like, well, this place is pretty cool. What would it look like at midnight? And I don't have to run to a save point or waste my time like an idiot and actually wait there for real time to pass or come back another time. I can change it at ease at any time. That is a great feature, and I absolutely love that it's there. I like the map. As you can see, there's a lot of icons, but once you familiarize with the world, you can read it better, but you can also filter it. So that's very nice. And you can see the map like this. So you get that 3D effect. And you can zoom in pretty close. So you can really explore the map literally. And uh, yeah, just kind of opens it up. So very cool. Should we talk about vendors? Every block is filled with food vendors and vending machines. And look, I get it. You don't have to make it so that you can order food from everyone, but there should be more than like 10 options that are scattered in random spots throughout the city. And also when you buy food, there's no animation to it. If they had just given you like a three to five second animation of you scarfing down a cold burrito, the immersion, I'm telling you the immersion. You can get drunk in cyberpunk and hey, it's a nice little feature. Your vision gets all blurry and kind of uh, distorted and warped and it's kind of cool. I like though, in Grand Theft Auto V, if you order a special drink at the casino, you'll black out and you'll usually wake up either somewhere else in the casino or outside of the casino. And I just think that if that was something possible in cyberpunk, it would make total sense for the world. Oh, had too much to drink in Chinatown. Next thing I knew, I'm waking up on a rooftop in Kabuki on this disgusting yellow stained bed that are scattered everywhere throughout the city. You know, it doesn't do much and maybe that would be an annoying thing to you, but I think the way they have fast travel and you can do it, I think it would lend itself to the story of the world, even if it doesn't impact the story of cyberpunk, the story to your experience in cyberpunk, which makes me curious. What's something that you would have liked in cyberpunk other than getting the complete game that we were promised? You know, what's something cool that would have added to your experience? I'd be really curious to know, so let me know in the comments below. So I guess that brings us to who you are. In Night City, you are V. Male or female, or whatever you prefer, you get to choose your genitalia. Yes, that's right. I actually like the idea of this. It's an extra layer of inclusion. It's unexpected. And hey, the Mario Brother games don't have that, so... Cyberpunk 1, Super Mario Brother 0 in that category. I am very glad that I took my time in creating my character. Because to be honest, usually I rush through this section 
especially if it's first person where I'm not going to see my character a lot. Usually I'll just pick something that's yeah good enough. Yeah, it looks fine. Let's move on. I'm very impatient. But I wanted to make the most of it. And also, if I do this step, I usually intentionally make my character vanilla in the beginning. I would have made my original V, you know, brunette with a ponytail. And then as she grows and progresses in her journey, then that's when I would change it up, get a cool haircut, dye it blue, get some piercings. But for whatever reason, I went with the idea that, no, she's been living this life for a while. Let's see her at her best self. Let's see her fully invested in the world. And I'm glad I did, because you cannot customize or alter your appearance once you start playing. Because CD Projekt Red hates you. It's a cheap shot, but why the H-E double hockey sticks? Is that not an option? This should be standard. Get a haircut. You should be able to do that anytime you want. San Andreas did it way back in 2004. Not 2004, 2004. To make it sound like it was longer ago, but it was still kind of long ago. Photo mode. Photo mode is something I didn't realize I wanted in video games until it started to become a thing. They actually have a good photo mode, I think. If you took some of the tools and options from this game, Red Dead Redemption 2, and Ghost of Tsushima, you would have the ultimate photo mode. I'm not sure what you would need. You can edit effects. You can change the field of vision the lens, add different filters. They have a bunch of stickers for you if you want. They have a really nice set of poses for you, both in action poses and idle poses. The ability to rotate your character, push them closer to you, further back. There's just a lot of nice options and adjustments you can do in the photo mode. And yeah, I think photo mode is one of the best things they've done. Let's talk about clothing. For the most part, I'm good with the options. But eventually, you see the same things over and over again. I would just like more options. I always like more options. And also, it would have been nice if you could see what your clothes would look like on you before you purchase them but nope not in cyberpunk they want your credits up front i mean is that what the world has come to now okay listen as a straight white male i'll admit the next thing i'm about to say is a little weird where are my fishnet stockings i want my fishnet stockings seriously some of the npcs have way better outfits than you and that should be a crime is that overdramatic? Yes. Does it change the fact that you should be able to own your own light-up fishnet stockings? No. Thanks for the free jacket, though. I haven't talked about music yet. Truth be told, I turned this off a few hours into my playthrough. Nothing against it. I usually turn my music off in my shooters. And that kind of started with Call of Duty, and especially Warzone, where... I found the music distracting, but also it's like, hey, don't try to inform me that this situation is intense or dramatic. If all the elements are there, I can figure it out with my own context. I don't need your music. That said, I wouldn't dare turn music off in a game like Doom Eternal, where it truly lends itself and even amplifies your experience. Here's another weird one. And if I lost you with the music bit, maybe I'll bring you back. Or maybe it's another silly suggestion. But if you have seating in a game, chairs, benches, whatever, 
and NPCs are able to sit down on those areas, you should be able to sit down there too. I'm walking everywhere, damn it. I need to rest. You know, you got to do this once. One time in an early mission, you get to sit down at a food vendor and eat some ramen noodles. And after that, nope, you're done. Hope you enjoyed it. Or look at Tom's Diner. I should be able to sit in that booth on my own time, not just for a cutscene. It would help me feel way more connected to this beautiful world that created. It is a beautiful world. It's a beautiful life. Do you want the moon, Mary? I'm not asking for the moon. I just want a chair to sit down. Also, I wish they had like silly little side missions like in Red Dead or Grand Theft Auto. You know, let me play poker. Let me sh throw darts. Something like that, you know. I, I would like more non-story side missions. And actually, I really want to hear what you think about that. What are something non-story mission related you would like to see in Cyberpunk? I mean, you can play tennis in Grand Theft Auto V. Did I ever play it more than once? No. But I am glad that it exists. Because just like in real life, yeah, there are activities I could do. But I should also have the option to say, yeah, you know what? Thanks, but no thanks. That sounds awful. I just think it would help lend to further deepen your experience in this game. I suppose there is one activity you can do that we haven't talked about. Talking, of course, about joy toys. What are joy toys? Let's take a look. Again, I hope you're subscribed. I hope you come here early because I'm pretty sure that YouTube is going to take this video down.